Mike Dukowski was inducted into the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame in 2002. Mike, congratulations on your induction. How important was baseball to you? Oh, very important. That was number one for me from day one. Baseball. What's mm -hmm. after I threw that? Talk about uh, about the sport and just growing up. Uh, what attracted you to well, baseball? Well, what attracted me? I was in all sports when I was going to school. No matter what it was, we did we? I was pretty active in it. And then we got into softball there and picked up teams and I became a pitcher, underhand pitcher. And I'd done that till 45. And then they decided to, when this guy gave me this ball and a glove, push a shoe at it, he said, here Mike, I want you to try and throw this. And GC was going to do it. He figured I could really throw it hard because I had a lot of speed with the softball. So I picked that thing up and I just fired and had a guy up against the ring down against the wall. I just let her go and he didn't, he didn't even catch it. He said, I just wound up and let it go. <laughs> and, and then I knew right there and then this is going to be something. So how much work was involved with the pitching part of it oh, uh, at that age especially? A lot. A lot. I worked at it at home and in school. A lot, a lot of practice. I used to hang up a rubber tire from up from the above and I would pitch through that hole. And I would throw my curveball, one finger ball through there too. This one and this one. I didn't care the right hand bat or left hand bat. I could wield that through there like you wouldn't believe. And that's where I got my, got my control. I said, control is the answer to baseball. I used to watch it on television. Without control, you're wild and all over the place. Well, forget it. Because we had kind of those kind of guys. In 1946, you helped form a five team school league in Snowflake and also played on the newly formed Snowflake senior team as a 14-year-old. Right. Talk about that at that age, oh, playing yeah. that competitively. See? See, I had this real fast ball, but my one-finger ball wasn't quite as effective but at that time yet, but I worked on it. And and uh, and the manager, he come and he watched us. See, on those years, we had so many players, but 40 guys wanted to play ball. The boys came home from the war, and they were playing ball before that. So they wanted to play, and we had about 40 players there. And we said, what would we do with all these players? So then, that's when I thought I had the high school team go. I said, let's put two teams in. And we did. So we went for five years or better. With a different, with a, only thing we didn't get in the senior league. We played in the other league we put together, five teams. You want me to name them? Sure. sure. Darling Ford, Manitou, Pilot Mount, Crystal City, and the Snowflake Bees. That's what we called ourselves. And the seniors were called A's. Were you surprised at that many people for such a, a small community oh, wanting to keep playing ball? Yeah, right. Very surprised. And once they started, they just all came to love it. He played in the Border Baseball League. How good was that league? Oh, tough. First years, of course, I was still young and early, you know, but tough. But I learned pretty fast. And there were some, there were some darn good ball players in the Border League. Father well, Mom was pretty tough because they were going at it for quite a while. Cartwright. Between Father Mom and Cartwright, you see, I figured they were the toughest at that time. When you were pitching, give me some names of some of the batters that, that really had trouble, you know, getting out. Well, once I got myself developed as a pitcher, you know, that fastball and that curveball coming down here and breaking down this way and that way, they were so confused and they were swinging over it. You see, along that I got a slider with it, then I, I got a change of pace of a real slow ball drop. They would come down just boom and drop out of sight, and they would swing their hearts out on it. And I'd mix them up. He didn't know what was coming at it, and I used the same wind-up for both. That was very deceiving for them. But there had to be some batters that, you know, whatever you try, they still seem to find a hole or get it. There always was, and especially the Belmont guys. I learned quick against Belmont there, because I was pretty young then. And he loved that fastball. He said, uh oh. And I learned pretty quick. See, we used to play them exhibition game between Snowflake, A team, and Belmont. We'd play at home in the country and we'd get an awful crowd and go back to Belmont. We, every spring for years we did that. The forties into the fifties. So that gave me a lot of and I watched these guys. And I remember Babe Gordon. He was a fastball pitcher like I was throwing there too. He told me a few things. And we could get help. What did he tell you? Well, he, he told me, Mike, you just got to. I was throwing my fastball too fast to get my curveball working properly. My slider and everything, you see? Then I got on and I started working on it, see? My slider, two finger slider, 
And then I hit that one, and all of a sudden, whoo, this way. <laughs> After you retired as a player in 1965, you gave back to the game, coaching and umpiring. Mm-hmm. Talk about that decision to stay, stay involved with the sport. Well, I didn't want to give it up because I was, I was really happy. I liked umpiring because I did quite a bit of umpiring going with teams in the minor, like the Bantam and the Pee Wees and the Midgets and all that. And I even go to Brandon Nim, I'd be an umpire, first base umpire. See, I didn't get behind the plate, but then I was a first base host of first base umpire, so I kind of really enjoyed it. So I, after I thought, if I'm going to retire, I'm not going to quit. But I couldn't do it all the time because I was in farming business and everything, I just couldn't get away all the time. So whenever I could, I would serve. In June of 2002, you were inducted into the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame. Talk about that day and the memories and, and just oh. what was all involved. Well, I just about fell off. When I got a phone call from Gladwin, Vince had been trying to get me for quite some time. But we were away for a while there, and he told everybody, don't tell Mike people he got inducted. I want to tell him. Surprise. So, uh, for after about two weeks or more, finally he got through to me. And he said, Mike, where have you been, Mike? And I said, well, I've been across the line for a little bit, a couple, few days, and here and there, and all that. And, uh, and, then we, and I got a surprise for it, I got something to tell you. And I hang on the phone, he says to me, we better go and get a glass of vodka. <laughs> 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 to cost you down a glass of beer. And he says, you're, you're going to be inducted in the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame. I said, oh no, glad and so soon. I didn't, you know what I mean? I just wrote it up there that, 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 that summer. And, and he said, yes. And you were one of the top delegates with 83 guys that are running, you'd be inducted, and you were about the second that was chosen. And I found out who the first one was, Cutler. <laughs> so, so that was so exciting, I just, I, could, I just gasped. I couldn't believe it. Special night that night, wasn't it? I mean, you're up on the stage and at the podium and talking about your career, and then it's a packed house at the Morton Rec right. Complex. Talk about that and how special that was. Well, that was pretty nerve-wracking, I'm telling you, I got in. I always kept, what got me more than anything, I had so much I wanted to say and talk, but I always did, I still see them watching the stopwatches only two or three minutes, and this would get me. I said, oh, I can hardly open my mouth up for two or three minutes, because <laughs> you know, I had so much to say around Southern Manitoba playing and all over, in the States even. We played a lot of teams from the States, even right here in town. July the 1st, we won this tournament two or three different times. 300 bucks was a lot of money back in those years. We were like millionaires after winning that, and I was one of the pitchers several times. And, and the other guys in, I went in relief as a closing pitcher. Mike, thanks for this, and thanks for your passion for the, for the game. Mike Dukowski was inducted into the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame in 2002. I'm Clayton Draker.